how did we all do? I finished every heart of doorway. Okay, final rating? I don't know, one or two stars. I don't know yet. <laughs> I, if I could, I would give it 1.5, but I don't know. It was just, it's just... Did you just say one or two stars for every heart of doorway? Yeah. Right, and like, so animated. somebody had very bright trousers, right? Or something, or a very bright dress. And it says, it was shockingly bright, much like the sun. It hurt Nancy's mm. eyes. Why much like the sun? Could I not just, <laughs> why much like the sun? Like we all know the sun's bright. Oh, uh, it's just like, it's just so cringy. Why did you need to have much like the sun? <laughs> it's just terrible. I hate stuff like that. It's just like, oh, I'm such a fancy writer. And I know that like nonsense worlds. Oh, look at me. I kind of know that Alice in Wonderland, I'm going to put this in here. You know, <laughs> and it's just like, it's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it just drives me. Just I drives cannot me wait on this video, by the way. I feel like it's going to be so entertaining. <laughs> hey guys, it's Rebecca. So today I'm going to be doing a video that I really, really wanted to film. And I thought before all of the rage that I feel goes into your rant review disappears, I'll just make the video. Basically, I think some of you will already have known that I've been doing a lot of reading sprints recently. And on the last few reading sprints, Friends, like on Rhiannon's channel from Welsh Reader. I'll leave her channel in the description. Just in different places. I've been ranting about a certain book that I've been reading. A lot of people would be shocked to hear that that is Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. I know that this is a booktube favourite. I know that so many people love this and I was one of those people who was just incredibly excited to get to this book. It's short, it's a fantasy, kind of like magical realism-esque. It involves children going into different magical worlds. It involves magical doors, doorways, an intermingling of different kinds of fairy tales or well-known children's stories where children really do enter into these other worlds that we have brushed off as children's stories. That's what I had in my head and that's what I had as a hope for this book because that's what I'd heard about it for so many years. Just incredibly hyped on booktube and I think that there's six of these books by now. It's a very, very, very extremely popular series. As well, what I'd heard about this book was that it was incredibly beautifully written. Now, whenever I hear that in booktube now, it actually raises massive alarm bells for me because, because to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, but I think what people think is beautiful writing on booktube and this is a very unpopular opinion but I think that people are very often mistaken between lyrical writing, poetic writing and just beautiful writing for the sake of it. Where it doesn't fit, it doesn't work with the story. Okay, so I'll explain that a bit more. Caraval's a good example of this whenever Stephanie Garber just goes on tangents which make no sense drawing like similes and metaphors that are so completely unnecessary, do not need to be there and just completely jarring and just knocks me out of the story every time. Now I can see how people could easily mistake this as good beautiful writing because it appears to be that way. I'm gonna give really exact examples from this book of exactly what I mean because I think people kind of jump on the bandwagon with this kind of lyrical writing that to me is just bad writing. It's just trying to be poetic for the sake of it whenever it appears to me that the author is almost incapable of writing a good simile or metaphor. That's what appears to be. Now, I don't believe that these authors aren't capable of that, but I think that it's almost like, well, it's YA, I can get away with any kind of writing that I want. That's what it comes across for in this book, uh, like, a lot. And it's not consistent. It's not beautiful. I think it actually makes no sense and it's completely unnecessary. I think it could have been edited and then actually made longer. And I think then it would have been better. So I'm actually very annoyed at this book. <laughs> because of how popular it is. I'm annoyed that I was so excited for it and was so let down. Now, I don't want to come across like that I'm saying that people are wrong for enjoying this book. That's the last thing that I want like to come across as because I can completely see why people enjoy this book and I can completely see why people would be inclined to carry on with this series, especially because I know that it follows different children um, and different worlds every single time. I will insert like a couple of clips of from whenever I was actually ranting about these on the, the stream. I'll kind of screen record it and pop them in, but I'll also leave links to those streams down below so that you can watch them and read along with us um, if you want to watch them back. But I'm just going to go through this book. This might be a long video, but I'm going to go through this book and 
show you why I disliked it strongly. <laughs> I ended up giving this book two out of five stars because I d although I did appreciate the idea, it's also an extremely stolen idea for multiple reasons. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that there because my hand's starting to hurt a little bit. So my first point is this. I actually use an example from like the second page of this book, I think. The home that the children go to, or the children slash like young adults slash teenagers, the characterization is done so terribly that I actually can't tell what age these people are. <laughs> the home that they go to, I find is, is, is very annoying because it's called Eleanor West's Home for Wayward Children. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of the, you know, very well-known booktube book called Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I'm sorry, but to change the name of the person, so Miss Peregrine's, to Eleanor West's home, so Miss Peregrine's Home for peculiar children, for wayward children. This book was published in 2016. Miss Barrican's Home for Peculiar Children was published in 2011. I wonder who stole what. To be honest, it's not that hard to actually think. This actually really, really annoys me because Miss Peregrine's was such a popular book on booktube far before this even came out, before anybody actually knew anything about it. People completely stopped paying any attention to Miss Peregrine's and give this all of the attention. Okay, so Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, although I didn't continue on with the series, it is one of those books that completely stuck with me and I have like specific feelings attached to reading that book and I, I haven't read that book in a long time. I read it around the time that it came out so I can't remember exactly whether that book was very well written or not but it did, you know, it is very popular and for this to come out and say Eleanor West's Home for Wayward Children, you're literally changing the name of the woman and like one word from peculiar to wayward. And in Miss Peregrine's, the children are are brought to that home because they are magical in some way. I think that, as far as I can remember, the actual home is magical. The home in this isn't magical, but the, the children basically are because they've been able to enter into these other worlds, these other magical worlds. The concepts are extremely similar, actually kind of really irritatingly similar, because it's just kind of like, okay, like Shauna Maguire, it feels like as if she thought, well, I can do this story better, I'm gonna write it better. Um, and I'm gonna write it in 180 pages and it just didn't work. I mean, automatically I knew that she was just stealing all of these ideas and putting them into a book. And I get it that she's kind of trying to incorporate the idea of, you know, Alice, the underworld, and I'll get into that in a bit later. But it honestly just comes across like, yes, she had this idea to kind of combine all of those stories, but it it comes in across in a way where it's like obnoxious, pretentious, and as if she's all knowledgeable and we're stupid and not going to get the references unless she points it points them out specifically. And then it comes across as if she's just stolen the ideas and not actually combined them effectively whatsoever. I do get really like annoyed because I don't like seeing people kind of just completely steal ideas. That's what really annoys me about this. So from the very beginning of the book, Eleanor kind of keeps really annoyingly referring to the logic worlds, nonsense worlds, so do all of the characters and literally no matter what, how many times the main character, what's she called, Nancy, every time she asks but what are you talking about, nobody will give her an answer and it's just so annoying. That really drives me insane and it's the fact that like, well, you tell me about all of these worlds but what are they? And it feels like I'm reading, I'm watching something off like Playhouse Disney or something. But you tell me about nonsense and you tell me about logic. But what are those? What really are they? And there's actually a quote where that actually happens. And it actually annoys me so much because it's actually as if the reader is actually like so stupid. I'm kind of going all over the place, but I'm just going through it as per note that I make. There's a persistent, consistent reference to pomegranate seeds, seeds in the underworld where Nancy goes to. And these pomegranate seeds are obviously to do with Persephone and the underworld. And Shauna Maguire feels the need to persistently m mention these pomegranate seeds as if we won't understand the reference. I got it in one reference. I think the majority of people are smart enough to get it in one reference. But Shauna Maguire feels like she needs to really, really underline and, you know, point out the significance of this. You could have done that once and then created your own story. Okay, yeah, bring in the mythological kind of um, references to pomegranate seeds. We'll get the joke, we'll get the reference really, really quickly and we'll think, 
that was really smart. I thought that on the first go. Then whenever she consistently mentioned the pomegranate seeds, every single time the underworld was brought up, that like literally every single two minutes, it was actually driving me insane because I was like, I'm not stupid. I don't think the majority of people reading this book are gonna be stupid. We get the reference. You don't need to tell me six million times. So yeah, here's the actual quote where I was talking about earlier. Why do people around here keep using that word? Like it's a place. Am I am I reading a pantomime or what am I or what am I doing? Because she keeps saying that and then they're like they're like, well I'll tell you in your introductory session. But like we do we really does she really get to learn much? So and then there's this actual terrible line on this page. It says whatever this character demanded, Oklahoma accent thick as peanut butter spread across a slice of toast. An accent thick as peanut butter spread across a slice of toast. Why do you need it spread across a slice of toast? I'm sure peanut butter is thicker whenever you just have it by itself than spread across a slice of toast. If you're going to spread across a slice of toast, it gets thinner. That's a, that line's just terrible. You could you could cut half of that out. If you really want to use peanut butter as a simile for something that's thick, I can think of many things to describe a, an Oklahoma accent being thick. Why, why can't you just say his Oklahoma accent was thick? Why do you need that simile in there? We get what it means. That's just terrible. If you're going to use a simile, make it good, not make it just... You, you, I, I could say anything. Do you know what I mean? Thick as the brown tree trunk across the street outside my house that's next door to my neighbour's dog that he always pees on. Do you know what I mean? I don't need to have... You don't need to have that big line. I just think that is actually terribly written. Uh, as I said, I'm just going along with my notes because I didn't want to, like, write out the notes because then, like, my anger at this would disappear, I feel like, if I had this organised. Written that a lot of the language and story feels very forced and I think that's definitely true like the whole way through. The next thing that really annoyed me in this book is the names of the worlds where the children go to. Sean Maguire was the least creative person I think I have ever seen in my life whenever she did this. Why does every single world, like every single world has a monarchy. Every single world. There was no there was no difference in any of the worlds. They just had slightly different names. There was Lord of the Dead, right? He was like the king of the underworld or whatever. And then you have the most ridiculous names ever. The Goblin Prince is okay. That's the one one. That's one of the... Lord of the Dead sounds fine. Goblin Prince sounds fine. But there's ridiculous ones where you could have at least done something different. So one of the character, characters go to what's called Fairyland. I'm very, very, you know, very new, very creative. This is... So this is one of the characters. I'll read this out and you can tell me how you feel about this. This is an entire paragraph. I was just going to point out one thing. And the main thing is... Rainbow Princess? Rainbow Princess? Am I reading? What am I reading? Am I reading a book for four-year-olds whenever they're first learning how to read? Or am I reading a, a, a popular young adult book? I, I really don't know which. So it says, this character, I went to a fairyland. I spent three years there chasing rainbows and growing up by inches. I killed a goblin king with his own sword and he made me his heir with his dying breath. The goblin prince in waiting. That is actually terrible. It's one of the most terrible things I have ever heard in my life. And then he continues on to say, the king was my enemy, but he was the first adult to see me clearly in my entire life. The court of the rainbow princess was shocked. And then they threw me down the next wishing well they passed. I'm not even going to say anything about that. Rainbow princess, rainbow princess, the goblin prince fell on his own sword. And then there's another line. It just after this was says it was it's, it's just awful and his voice ached around that single syllable like flesh aches around a knife as i said earlier as well this is a perfect example of how i feel like shauna mcguire is just trying to show off um how of an, how much of an amazing writer that she is i feel like it's just like that the whole time so one of the characters is talking about what kind of like clothes she wore in the underworld we were more um grecian where i was i guess or pre-raphaelite like as if shauna mcguire is just gonna go look at all these i know what pre-raphaelite is I'm not going to explain what it is to anybody who doesn't know, but I do. I also find this bit like very, very, very annoying. I want to say first of all that I'm not asexual, but I can recognise whenever something feels very forced in a story. And although I appreciate it, as there is a transgender character in this book, that's nothing. I didn't have like a problem with any of those kinds of bits. And I do appreciate there being both a transgender character and an asexual, aromantic character. I do appreciate those things being in there. But what I want to see is an author who incorporates those things into a story and doesn't just make it seem as if it's like a point that she's making to make her seem very accepting of this as if she's adding this into the story just so that she can have an asexual character in the book. 
I don't like that. I don't know as well if Shauna Maguire herself is asexual or aromantic. I don't know these things. But despite whether she is or not, I feel like it's a, more of a skill to be able to incorporate this in the story and kind of show the reader instead of literally blatantly explaining and saying, I am asexual and this means that blah, blah, blah. Which is what like Sean and Maguire did in this. And like, I just really, really didn't appreciate it. So there's a, a line where she says, I'm asexual. I don't get those feelings. Okay, that's fine because the character is stating herself, I'm asexual, I don't get those feelings, that's it, full stop, that's fine. But that didn't need to be brought out more, that didn't need to be further explained. We could have been like, it's as if we're just given like two pages of explanation as to what this is, but we're not inside the character's head, we're kind of being narrated it to and told it. And that's where I don't really like the way that it was done. And then this is further explained by one of the worst lines. I don't know if this is supposed to be funny or I don't know what, but it's just a bit ridiculous to be honest. And then after she says that, then this character called Sumi then says back, well, okay, is it going to bother you if I masturbate? That's the line said back. And then this is made into like some kind of a joke where she has to be like, ooh, and everything like that. Who in their right mind would say that back to somebody who's telling you their sexuality, first of all? Second of all, why is this used to then further explain why asexuality is? Why couldn't have that have just been taken and then full stop and then it's done? And then we're then showing these things? Why do we have to be told that and through that kind of a line? Like, why... Does it take her having to say, no, I don't want to watch you do that? Or that makes me uncomfortable f for you to do that? I mean, I'm sure like pretty much anybody of any sexuality wouldn't want to be asked that question or like have to say, I don't want to watch. I'm pretty sure you don't have to be asexual to not want that. Why is that a, a, why is that a question that, that's furthered on from that? I just find that, I just don't like that. And it's very all of a sudden as if it's just there for shock factor. Just there to be like, well, if you don't, if you're not attracted to me, then like, can I still do this? Well, don't tell me if you're going to. And second of all, and why does it matter if I'm asexual or not? Like what? So like if I wasn't, I would like want you to. Why is that? furthered on from her talking about her asexuality. I just find it very odd. I don't like it. It just makes me feel weird. But anyway, a bit like of a less serious kind of talk than that. I think that I do have kind of pointers further on about why I kind of think that it's just kind of like a token asexual, asexual character. I think it depends probably on who's reading it to be honest and I think it is nice that it's there but I'll kind of explain. Just kind of like show that she's accepting like I find what I'm actually talking about. This is why I kind of think that the mention of the asexual and transgender character is like kind of token characters or not even token characters more like Sean and McGuire being like look at me I'm so accepting look at how amazing I am that's how it came across to me I'm quite sure I don't want to have sexual relations with him but I don't think his gender expression is any of my business I don't know why that has to be an entire line and I'll say why first of all just because you're asexual doesn't mean that you can't say any words, any sexual words at all, as if they're like, you're incapable of saying them. So I don't want to have sexual relations because she's uncomfortable with that. And I guess maybe, but it doesn't, we're not told at all that she's uncomfortable with that topic. It's just like, as if she's asexual, so she can't say those words. And I don't know, I don't think that those two things go hand in hand, do they? And I don't think his gender expression is any of my business. These are all like very, it's all very like formal. Why do you have to make it so formal? Like, I'm pretty sure if it was me, I would say, okay, well, it's none of my business whether he's transgender or not, or something like that would be, or like, well, I don't care. Like, it's not, none of it's my business, or maybe, but I don't care what his gender expression is. Like, that's a very, like, formal word, and it's just making it seem as if Shauna McGuire is trying to say, look at me, I know these words that are very accepting. And somebody called Jill, called the transgender character, called Kate, she. Miss Ely said that we respect people's personal identities here. So we're given, literally, like, an entire page on all of these different kinds of very technical terms and, and it just feels like very forced. It, it could have been done, I feel like it, this could have been done in a much better way. It's all very forced and there's bits on this page too where I feel like it goes along with like the shock factor where one of the characters suddenly swears and then we're brought into talking about these people's sexualities. So from shock factor 
to then bring into people's sexualities it doesn't flow it's like suddenly we're getting a character like swearing whenever we're told that this is a home for wayward this is a home for wayward children but they're not children they're like older than that so i'm kind of like and then on the same pages we're brought to talking about people's asexuality and explaining transgender characters and how we should accept them and we be very very accepting of them does that need to be there why can't they just be like he's transgender or whatever and move on with it just move on with it we don't need an explanation we should be showing these things maybe showing the characters just not caring just show the characters just being his friend and just why, why does it have to be pointed out oh we respect people's identities here why does that need to be there why can't you just be like yeah he's trans transgender and that's it he got just because he is just because and then just show that they don't care because they're they're really nice to him they're friends with him all of that kind of thing why does it need to be pointed out like that it makes it feel really really forced as if Sean Maguire is saying look at me I have this character and all of my characters are accepting of him but you could just have them and that's it and just have the characters you don't have to tell me why you accept them or explain why they are the way they are I mean but she doesn't even do that it's not exactly like a real in like it's not a real detailed backstory or anything like that where we're inside the character's heads um even you know in third person even though if we're in close third or something and we get to see the characters you know a bit more into how they feel we don't get that we're kind of told yeah they're transgender and we are really 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 accepting of them i mean somebody else wasn't but we were told that we have to be no i don't like that i don't like that and that's what happens in this book and i just have like a major problem with that because i believe that if we're going to have diverse characters which i 100 percent want to read about and i 100 percent want to see this i'd never read about this before and yeah as i said i like that it's there i know this is a big tangent but i don't want people to misunderstand what i'm saying i like that it's there i just feel like it should be incorporated into the story as if they're just like any of the other characters why do i need to be told that they are specifically accepting of them they should just do it that's what i think <laughs> hopefully that makes sense because i don't want to seem as if like i'm like oh don't have the the character there or don't attempt to have it's better than not i guess but but almost it just it, it just brought me out of the story and i always know that that's like an issue if i'm just kind of like wait what i i was happy like oh it's an asexual character full stop that's it that's it that's all i need to know just show me don't tell me please okay so my camera just died because it overheated. I'm just going to draw attention to a line that really 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 annoyed me in here. As I said this is a very disorganized video but I'm just going through my notes because as I said I didn't want it to be really really organized and then I wouldn't be as angry. Eleanor had changed for dinner trading electric orange trousers and rainbow sweater for a lovely sheath dress made from tie-dyed muslin. It was shockingly bright. Much like the sun it hurt Nancy's eyes. Much like the sun it hurt Nancy's eyes. Again I'll put in another clip because much like the sun it hurts Nancy's eyes, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm moving on. I just got to a line in here and I just want to say that this actually really bothered me. Um, there's a trigger warning in here for disordered eating. It's very, very small. I'll just read out a bit that actually really annoyed me because if I can find it, there's a line where, where she says something like, I don't have like an eating disorder, I just like don't eat much. And then there's another story about where one of the people, Jack and Jill, changing the Jack and Jill story up a bit. We went to a very nice place where we met very nice people who loved us very much but there was a little problem with the local constabulary and we had to come back to this world for a while for our own safety. The local constabulary. I just find that so stupid. Also here is the reference where she definitely does mean Alice in Wonderland because she never shuts up about nonsense and everybody knows that like you know Lewis Carroll's the king of nonsense. Alice, that's the whole point in Alice. It's the, you know, it's the world of nonsense. And I quote, I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland when I was a kid and I never thought about what it would be like for Alice when she went back to where she'd started. I figured she'd, she'd just shrug and, get, shrug and get over it, but I can't do that. So she does mean Alice. She does mean Alice and she's just... We, uh, and she's drawing attention to it as if we're stupid as if we haven't got the reference i get the reference we all get the reference we know the reference we know what you're trying to do but but just just please don't also here's another very obvious 
Alice reference with your looking glass eyes. I wonder what that's a reference to. She touched the pomegranate ribbon in her hair. There's this other stupid line where it says, Jill laughed. I don't wear these because I want to remember where I've been. I wear them because the master liked it when I dressed in pale colors. They showed the blood better. Isn't that why you wear white? Because your master liked to see you that way? I, Nancy stopped. He wasn't my master, he was my lord. Is that much better? Is that much better? Why, why is I, I didn't have a master, I had a lord. Well, good for you. Also, another blatant Alice in Wonderland. Hello, Nancy out of Wonderland. So, Kate describes, I'm the loophole kid. I want to remember prison more than anything. The way the air tasted and the way the music sounded. Everyone played these funky pipes there, even little kids. Funky pipes? You could have whole conversations without putting your pipes down. I grew up there, even if I wound up getting tossed out and forced to do it all over again. I kissed a girl with hair the colour of cabbages and eyes the colour of moth wings. That's so stupid. Also, spoilers, there's this bit where they just like go and like find bodies and stuff, but none of them are disturbed. They, fought, they find somebody with their hands cut off, somebody with their eyes gouged out, somebody with their brain cut out and only one person throws up but this crew they they're able to dissect bodies they're fully able fully able but they're not disturbed they're fully able and nancy even though she was in lord of the dead was she like constantly like you know around people with no hands like human bodies with no hands and stuff i doubt she was they would be all dead and in their spiritual forms they wouldn't be like full on human people with their hands and stuff cut off. That would be disturbing to anywhere, anybody. I, if your Lord of the if your Lord of the Dead was so kind and all, I, I don't think you saw these disturbing things. Yeah, you heard people screaming at night and you might have got used to the screams, whatever. But I'm sorry, but were you seeing these disturbing sights constantly? No, you weren't. No, you didn't say that you were. You weren't. So why 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 are you so able to deal with dead people? Also there's a bit where she says, Nancy goes, You're horrible, said a voice. Nancy was only a little surprised to find out it was her voice. I'm sorry, but there is no way on earth I'd ever say you're horrible and not realise it was coming out of my mouth. Plus, the whole book felt like I was reading an episode of a Disney Channel show that flopped in 2017 and only got one season. I'm glad we didn't go through the same door because I would hate to have travelled to a world that didn't teach its tourists any manners. You walk slow, but you move fast. How do you do that? That makes no sense. You walk slow but you move fast. That makes no sense. So then you don't walk slow because you're moving fast. Or you're not moving fast because you're walking slow. You can choose one or the other. And as well, look, another world. The Queen of Dust. The Queen of Dust. Why is everybody a queen? The Princess of Rainbows. The Queen of Dust. The Lord of the Dead. The Goblin Prince. All of these things. Plus, as well, I'm going to get to that later, but the Goblin Market is also a place. And I get that, okay. But there's another thing. There's another thing, okay? We get it, so is that a reference? You don't need to tell me. C.S. Lewis never went through any doors. He didn't know how it worked. Okay, great idea. So original. So you are just incorporating all of these I I ideas into worlds, but you're not admitting that that is the same world. Why couldn't you have had it the same world? No, you had to pretend it was yours. So suddenly, there's a guy called Christopher and he always has a bone in it sticking out of his back pocket that he loves and he carries everywhere. A bone, a bone. Christopher brought up the rear, his bone sticking out of his back pocket like an upthrust middle finger. <laughs> I can't, that is actually one of the most hilarious lies I've ever heard. Like an upthrust middle finger. Why do you need that sentence? Why do you just say his bone was out of was there in his pocket? And why were we told six million times that he carries a bone in the back pocket? We get it, we only need to tell, you know, you need to tell us once. How can you say, how can you yap about something over and over and over again and there's only 180 pages? We get it. The bone was in his back pocket. As well, they're, they're like doing forensics. These children slash teenagers slash whatever they are, stunted children, whatever they are, we don't really know. It's not really explained. Are looking at these the skeleton bones. Who was their friend? Who they knew? Who they went to school with? But they're fine with it. They're not disturbed. It's fine. They're they're special. They they're, they don't get disturbed by terrifying things. And then this guy Christopher says, "Once she's a skeleton, I might be able to figure out what happened to her." Said Christopher, sounding almost shy. And then there was a pause. Finally, dubiously, Jack said, "I'm sorry, but it sounded like you just confessed to being able to talk to bones. When are you going to tell us that?" No. If somebody said to me, once she's a skeleton and cleaned up or whatever, I might be able to get more information. The first thing that wouldn't came to me wouldn't be, 
so you can talk to the bones so you can communicate with bones that's not the first thing that would come into my head that's certainly not if somebody said i could ask the bones you didn't say that i'll ask the bones how they are even if you had asked the bones but it's stupid anyway being able to ask bones talk to bones talk to bones but the bones are inside the body so why why only when the bones are out of the body can you only talk to them the bones? <laughs> that makes no sense I, you could talk to my finger or something like it's just stupid it's like just because there's skin around it he can't talk to them but he can talk to bones he can communicate with them so why can't he read everybody's mind then but it must be only whenever the bones are fresh and out of the body so whatever but if somebody said once she's a skeleton, I might be able to find out what happened to her. I wouldn't say, oh my god, so you can talk to the bones. You never even told us that you can talk to the bones. I should have known. Should have known. But he didn't tell anybody about the bones because he enjoys having a social life at school. Being able to talk to bones is stupid as well. Oh, this is hilarious. This is bit is hilarious. Whoa, said Kate. He sounded genuinely impressed. That's some trick. Do you actually turn into stone or does it only seem like you do? He propped her gently in the arm with one finger. Nope, still flesh. You're holding really, really still, but you're not inanimate. How are you doing that? Are you even breathing? I can't do that. And then she says back, Nancy says back, the lady of shadows required that everyone who served her to be able to hold properly still. Her cheeks reddened again. This was all going so wrong. I'm sorry, I tend to freeze up when I get nervous. So during all this, he's like, how can you do that? I can't do that and poking her and stuff. Okay, now here comes the best bit, the bones, the talking, fluting bones. Okay, so it turns out the bone in his pocket was actually a flute. She'll rise up clean and lovely, back in the country of bones. Hi, creative, okay? Hi, creative. Back in the country of bones, the country of bones, where everybody talks to bones. Wild, wild. It's called the country of bones. Is it the Queen of Bones and the King of Bones and the Lord of Bones? So I find this, now apparently this is supposed to be a touching moment, but I find this hilarious. So this girl has died, who we're not attached to at all, because her character hasn't been developed. We don't care about this girl who's been killed, murdered, right, suspiciously. We, we're not invested in the story, okay, because it's not written very well, Because so we don't get to know the story, so I don't care about this girl dying, personally, because I'm not attached to her, so it's just like reading, a fictional character has died, I, I, I don't care if a fictional character, I, I don't have any attachment to her die, to dice, okay, so if I actually cared about the girl who died, then this would be maybe slightly different, but bones and flutes together, so are hilarious, so a bone flute is just too far for me. So Christopher raises his flute to his lips and begins to play. There was no sound, not that the living could hear. There was only the idea of sound, the sudden overwhelming sensation that something was being overlooked. Something small and subtle and hidden between the molecules of silence. That's stupid. Jack opened the wardrobe and took out a cravat. Listening as hard as she could as she removed her bow tie. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and why what's that have to do with anything? She heard her own breathing. She heard Christopher's fingers brushing across bone. She heard a splash. She turned around. Christopher was still playing and L'Oreal was setting up a polished bone sculpture. There was a pearlescent sheen to her like opal and Jack wondered idly whether that was the acid or the magic of Christopher's flute at work. So she, her body's shining and she thinks it's it's the flute the magical bone flute even though they're not in the magical world the bones still somehow have magic even though he's not in the bone world anymore he can still create bones to glisten and dance he can make bones glisten and dance and he can play a bone flute and then a skeleton gets up that's amazing said jack taking a step forward can't she see you is she aware or is this just magic animating her bones? Does it work on any skeleton? Or just those who died violently? Can you? You can't answer of any of those questions unless you stop playing, can you? Well, what did she, what did she want to do? Just briefly put down the, the, the flute and say, uh, actually, this is all, this is how it's all explained. This is how it's all explained. I'm done now, just let me get back to playing my bone flute and let the skeleton dance. Did he want to say it so the words came through the flute? Is that what she thought was gonna happen? <sighs> That's right. 
You can't speak while you're playing a flute. I should have known all the skills she'd learned from Dr. Blake. The ability to groom herself while running for her life seemed the most likely to continue to serve her well. Christopher followed her more sedately, playing his silent flute all the way. So there's not even any actual sound coming out. So you just imagine there's just silent with something that I think might be sound, but I can't hear actually, but apparently it is. But how do they know these things? It felt like there might be a bit of sound. So we're kind of closely, the narration's stupid because if, if we're not closely following the characters, but we are sometimes when it suits Sean and Maguire, but we're not always so that we're told that there's some remnants of flutes in the air and we're given all of these um, similes, but they're not the character similes. Oh no, there's some random narrator and the narrator is close third, but also distant, also omniscient. Pick one, can't be all. This is the best bit, L'Oreal, the skeleton, trailed after them, her toes tapping on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is meant to be emotional, but we're told that a skeleton's toes are tapping along to the music on stairs or, or just walking along. So tit tit like tit tit. The skeleton's walking along, making a sound that was virtually indistinguishable. <laughs> so L'Oreal trailed after him, her toes tapping on the stairs, making a sound that was virtually indistinguishable from the clatter of dried branches on a window pane. So it literally sounded like tit 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 and we're supposed to be like really like following this person but yet and all we're being described that a, 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 that a skeleton's basically making the sound of somebody tap dancing. Then this is a funny line. Some of her greatest detractors said she acted like a woman with something to hide and they were right in their way. She was a woman with something to protect. That made her more dangerous than they would ever have suspected. Wow, so feminist. So powerful. Every Hardy Doorway is 100% one of the worst books that I have ever read. And I hope that I explained myself well. Probably didn't because it's actually a mess, but I'm just so angry at all of these weird things that happen in this book. I don't think it's good. I think it's quite bad, to be honest. I give it two stars. So, I mean, vaguely the ideas are kind of good. I mean, I, you're tempted, you know, I want a star for a, a tempting. I would probably give it one or 1.5, but I felt kind of bad and you know, I guess, you know, the creativity is kind of there. You tried, you tried, but if you're going to have an Alice in Wonderland world, why can't it be the Alice world? Why do you have to have this fake nonsense stuff? All the clips and stuff, I'm sure it will be edited in, in here and hopefully that will like enhance this video a wee bit because I feel like it's an absolute mess. I will be doing a video where I react to one and two star reviews of Every Heart of Doorway, which I am really, 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 really excited for. Um, so expect that one to be up soon. I'm sorry if this was really weird and really rambling and just a little disclaimer that I do not mind if you love this book. I completely appreciate how people can love this book and I get that maybe they get better or something, but it's just not the book for me and I feel like I might as well just be honest. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. Um, if you did, then please like and subscribe. I would really, really, really appreciate it. Please don't unsubscribe to me just because we have different opinions. As I said, we can 100% um, be friends and have different opinions. I'm completely happy with that. I don't think you're stupid for liking this book. I don't think that you're wrong for liking this book. It it's just not for me and obviously thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed as I said please like and subscribe if you did enjoy it um, and also hit the notification bell down below I would really appreciate that thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one